Dr. Drew. Love Line, Coast to Coast. Hey, it is Love Line, the phone number here, 1 800 L O V 191. I'm Dr. Drew, and uh, I'm not Adam Carolla. In the studio with me is a third strike. Jim Corthy, lead stringer, right? How you doing? And Eric Carlson, guitar player. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming in, guys. We are very excited to meet you since you're one of uh, you're one of Fletcher's finds. <laughs> any, friend, any, any friend of Fletcher's, a great friend of ours. <laughs> you didn't bring any vomit or anything or no. Poo City uh, uh, <laughs> uh, paraphernalia, nothing to, not to remind us of Fletch. Yeah. No. no, we're clean. And now you guys are going to do the Warp Tour and the OzFest, is that right? Yeah, a little bit of oh both. Oh, my God. We don't need you. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Is. How dare you? The show started? Yeah. <laughs> my car clock's off. Oh, no kidding. Sit down. Have a relax. All right, buddy. Third strike. Hey, guys. How you doing? How you doing? Good times. Yeah, good times. <laughs> Sorry, freeway's a mess. I got off. I was cutting through town. It was uh, like uh, the streets of San Francisco. Oh. Yeah, we switch cops? Yeah. No, we're right. just hearing these guys, are, these guys were found by Fletch from Pennywise. Oh, my God. And they are going to be on OzFest and the Warp Tour. With, uh, with Pennywise and uh, anybody else who's on it? I yeah, they're not yeah, doing yeah. Well, everyone else is on, but is Pennywise going to be doing those? No, no, that's the one band that won't be doing oh, those. Oh, good. All right. All right, very lucky. Thanks for, thanks for reminding us. Mm. But, uh, Keep interviewing, Drew. Right. I will. I will. Uh, and now, Jim, you grew up here in Southern California, right? Yes, I did. They, they only thing, the only sort of uh, tag they give us that it was a bad neighborhood. What does that mean? Well, I, uh, well, I grew up in a, not a bad neighborhood, but I ended up, I went to high school, met some people, and... You know, I gravitated toward the gang. I jumped in, you know, did about seven years. In a gang? In that, yeah. How'd you get out of that? It was just time, you know. A lot of friends were dead and in prison. And did the music pull you out of yeah, that? I yeah, I mean, it was definitely, I had the music going, and it was just the time I was at the crossroads, and I chose the right way to go, and luckily it's working out, you know. Were people angry with you for leaving? or just Some of them, resentments yeah. for Some of them, but the majority of them, you know, they wanted me to to make them proud, you know. One way or another. One of, one of them to make it out, you know. And how'd you guys meet? In a gang. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Uh, actually, met him in a sober living house. Really? Bad, yeah. That's mm-hmm. kind of a gang. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Probably worse than the Crips of the Bloods. You guys still sober? <sighs> trying to. Try, I, mean, I don't know. I drink a little bit every once in a while, but when we're on the road, we we try and stay it's kind clean. Of tar- yeah, do you, are you familiar with Musician's Assistance Program or Music Cares or any of those guys? Because uh, they, not, they not will personally. set up, they will help you with your tour, setting up sober people that keep you keep around, you didn't go to meetings. Meetings and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, we do a pretty good job. You know, we all try and support each other. There really hasn't been any trouble so far. So, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty smooth so far. Yeah. Drew doesn't think you can uh, chip, though. So it's either got to be sober or you're on. He doesn't believe in any of that, you know, beer here and there business. Yeah. Well, they know that. I listen to the show a lot. I, I know, uh, I know I mean, a lot of your views I mean, on that. It's not, it's not really, actually, it's not even my views. It's my observation. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just what I see works and what doesn't work. I, w- I wish it'd be great if there was such a thing as moderation. Once that switch is thrown, it's... All right, but let me, let me ask you this, Drew. Yeah. Well, what if there's somebody who is going through a particularly tough time in their life and they get into this substance, right? Right. So they, they get really into whatever whatever substance it is, they have a bad couple of years right. with it. And then they get sober. Right. But then a few years goes by and they realize, I was really into this substance because it was a really bad time in my life, but I'm not really an alcoholic or I'm not really a, really whatever. And I, I can have a cocktail every Th- once in a while. That's very rare. It is it's actually very because what because anybody that can stop drinking stops, and anybody that can't, this if they well, can't, but they're stopping by getting into a program. No, it, it, this the program is designed to dealing with the biology of being unable to stop. If yeah, you but, can stop, you should just stop. See a psychologist get your life together. Go ahead and stop. Progress. Well, but this. but if they just stop, you're not going to go for that either, are you? They can't. The biology will not. No, I'm them. saying maybe they do. Then they're not an addict. Then they, then they just stop. Well, I mean, maybe they stop by means of the program because that's an easier, more effective way for them to do it. No, you're, you're missing, confused you're, now? I'm confused. You're confused what the program is. Well, I'm saying they, they drink for a few years. They feel like they're a, out of control with it, and then they stop. Then, they, then they're not an addict. They're not an addict. They're not because well, they say there's like three types of people. There's like the people that just recreationally do it, and then there's the people that 
might do it a little bit more and kind of have a problem with it. But I get, but if they're faced with something like losing the job or getting sick or something they'll like stop. that, they'll stop. Exactly. And then there's the people that it doesn't really matter what's going on. They'll lose everything and they'll just keep going. That's an addict. Yeah. Exactly. And, that, and, that's, and that's a biology that if it's if it's it's a switch that gets thrown in the brain and once that switch is active it's it it's over yeah. it's game on well, that's those people yeah. well, those are the people we treat those people look, are in the program. I'm, not, I'm not saying everybody in the program can't uh, why can't those guys have a beer 10 years later when they're in a different place because i'll, I'll if you want me to get into no, it uh, no, there's no, a whole biological no. explanation well, for listen, that. you know i'm right well a lot of those people that are sober for 13 14 years i mean i saw a lot of them at meetings that were sober that long then they go out once Pow, and then it. it's just over the, with. The, the way the biology works, it deal. It, it's like it's like a reward level is etched into your brain that if you reactivate, the brain insists you go back to that same place. Insist, uh, just the uh, same no. as if you were still using all. Right, but I'm saying not everybody in there is of that ilk. That's what I'm if saying. Everyone in there is of that ilk, or they shouldn't be there. Right. Some people don't know. They just go in there. People just go into clean their, themselves I, up. I've never seen that. Oh, yes, you have. I've never seen well, that. Well, not in it. Not not when you're checking yourself into a, the Betty Ford Clinic, but I'm talking about it going to AA meetings. It's never possible. seen that? I've, not, I've never no, seen please, that. Well, please. people who go there who go there oh, wait, willfully... I, I, I've seen one. I take it back. I've seen one. <laughs> Usually people they go one. there themselves and check themselves in. They need to be there, but there's people who go there through court and through this and that, you right. know, who may not have a problem, but they have to go to get, you know, some court right. clearance or something. Right. All right, you want to take some calls, Drew? Yeah, let's do. This is uh, Leslie, who is 15. Leslie. Hi. What's up? Uh, I don't know. I'm in a relationship with my boyfriend, and we've been in it for almost two years. And, like, I have a great time and all, but I just worry that it's too serious. And that I'm not going to get any other, like, experience when this is the time when I'm supposed to be seeing other How people. How long have you been with him? Two? Hmm? Two yeah. years? Almost. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're, seems like enough. Yeah, your instincts sound good. That, that it, that's in fact what is what happens. You get joined at the hip with someone, and you lose the opportunity to really explore who you are. Plus, the fact that you're thinking this way after being with somebody for two years suggests you want to get out. You just don't know how. But it's like I'd like to be with him. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and when you're 15, you think you're going to see everyone you've seen your whole life for the rest of your life. You know, you want to, you want to, you know, you go, um, when I graduate high school, I'm going to go back. I'm going to see all my teachers. I'm going to let everyone know what I'm doing. And I'm right. going to keep all my boyfriends and girlfriends. It never works that way. No. I don't know. My mom married your high school sweetheart, but then oh. they got divorced. And well, you don't want that to happen, do you? No. And she gets all worried because she thinks that that's going to happen to me. Well, there you go. And the, that's, it's, she's gotten it across to you that that's not necessarily a healthy thing to be doing. So that's cool. All right. Yeah. All right, Leslie. Time break, to break up. Afraid <laughs> so. New boy. Drew, what, what percentage of people call this show do we tell to break up? Or, or the boyfriend or, or the girlfriend? Not to say to break up, but just that it's over. It's just over. I'm 90%. Yes. Maria, 17. Maria? Mm hmm. What's up? All right. Well, I'm kind of a lesbian, and I have a boyfriend, and that's just a cover up, and I'm wondering how I could tell him. Well, you got to keep your boyfriend. You can't break up. You need him. You need him as a beard, right? Otherwise, people will catch on to you. Well, I, I mean, I'm a lesbian, and I just, I can't. I Did, didn't she sound loaded to you? No, loaded. she's not loaded. It's yeah. just put her on hold for a second. Okay. Slow people take a while to process stuff. <laughs> like, like you go, you go. Listen, you want to get to the Amco? You go straight down Ventura. You go right, right where it crosses Woodman. And then it's like one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. <laughs> right on Woodman. You see, they're they're the couple. They're like how I read. Right. They listen how I read. Right, right, right. Like when I watch something that has a subtitle, everyone in the room starts laughing, and then it's like one, one thousand, <laughs> two, one thousand, three. One. <laughs> hey, that's good. I do that with cartoons and anything that involves reading. <laughs> I think that's how dumb people hear, Drew. <laughs> yeah, you ever well, think about I, that? Yeah, it makes sense to me. But uh, so, what are we telling Maria that? Uh, what are, you, what are you asking us? We don't understand what you're asking. Well, I'm wondering how I could, like, come clean. I mean, should I break up with him or Yes, what? break up with him. Well, who do you want to come clean with beside him? Like, just, I don't know, my friends and... You want to tell your your family? My parents, yeah. Will they go nuts? Yeah. Yeah. Going to get Dad back, huh? A little payback time for Daddy? <laughs> huh? He... He just got really mad. What did he do to you? 
Not he didn't do anything to me, but I mean he would just be upset. Is he a religious guy? No. Why would he be upset? Because I guess he's like against all that, like the gay thing and the lesbian thing. He's just like against it. Do you love him? Yeah. And you, and you respect him? Yeah. And he's a good dad to you? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll give him, a, give him another couple of years. You don't have to tell him yet, then. You'll be surprised at what parents will understand. Yeah. And if he, he loves you, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm convinced we have a true lesbian here, by the way. Yeah, a born lesbian. No one molested you? No. Well, no. my mom did when I was younger. Your mom did? Yeah. Perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. Really? What did she do to you? <laughs> yeah, well, um, when I was three years old, she she had me to, well, she was breastfeeding me, but there was no milk, so I guess she was just doing it for her own pleasure. So, I mean, that's kind of a child molesting if there's no milk and she's kind of making me suck her boobs, you know? Well, a actually, it's interesting because I've had this. Uh, listen, really? I've got, I know someone who had their kids doing this till they were six. Wow. Yeah, well, in, hold on. In Europe, they do this and they do late do this. all the time. That's there are a bunch right. of fairies <laughs> over there, but that's, but that's what they do. But maybe, this, maybe that has something to do with one's orientation, or maybe the mother that would do that for an extended period would... Well, no, no. I mean, we, we, we get women... I mean, we wean kids off the breast at, yeah. uh, what, a year? Yeah. year and a half or something? Two years max. My parents yeah. had me looking for a job at two and a half. Oh, you were cleaning carpets at four. I was before. selling grit. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? But, all right, but here, look. Here, here's the deal. In, in, I hear in Europe, they'll, they'll go to like five, six years old. They think it's uh, like a normal thing. It, well, but, but interesting about Maria saying, though, she's but, picking up on the fact that it was for her mom that this was going uh, on. That's the part Maria. that's weird about it. So how do you know? Have you ever had this conversation with her? Yeah, I have, but she keeps on denying it because she thinks maybe I don't remember because I was so young. But I know the milk was not coming out, and she just was making me do that. And I knew what? that I didn't really think about it until, like, when I was older. I was like, wait, you know, my mom shouldn't have been doing that. No. Like, well, but you were three, which is not seven, and maybe she thought you were going to get some milk. Was she getting aroused I mean, or something? Did you have some she, sense she of something? She did it for her own pleasure. She's, she's been, like, prostituting. She's just, oh. like, the most oh. horrible oh. mom you could ever have. Uh, that's a different all story. Right. All right, all right. So she was a drug addict? No, but I think she may be bipolar because... All right, so just, just having an addicted, crazy mom can be... Can she, your mom's you. crazy, yeah, but I, I don't you. think she was trying to get pleasure from, from mm, you no. suckling on her. Jim had a... a <laughs> no, I, I... You had a crazy mom? No, that, that was more I the I bipolar in my mouth, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're bipolar. I'm bipolar, yeah. So. Hey, John, you're on meds, off meds? I'm on meds, um, a lot of them. What do you got? Trazodone, Prozac, Zyprexa, Neurontin. You feel better? Be better. Yeah. Once <laughs> I took that one pill. Would you get flesh ticks on that too while you're at it? <laughs> this crap is white. <laughs> <laughs> Fletcher's got a Pfizer. Right I was going to stop by it. later. Oh, no. Oh. I didn't take my yeah, I didn't take my pills today. And hey, Maria? Uh huh. Um, so there is some issue with the family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah surely. Uh, okay, baby. Um, so you want to get man. back at mom, not back at dad. Look, you, do, you don't have a false relationship with anyone. Go ahead and have your relationship with your girlfriend. Come clean if you want to, if you feel comfortable. We usually recommend people that they, they don't do it as a, any kind of payback or desire to get any kind of reaction from anybody. To tell people it, stuff. Yeah, it's just like if you have a lot of gay friends, you've got support, you're ready to come clean about who you are, go ahead. Yeah. That usually doesn't happen until about college. It's so weird because we've never talked to anybody who wanted to tell their parents they were gay or lesbian who did not want to pay them back. No. Hmm. But it's almost exclusively the women it's a payback for daddy and the guys it's payback for mommy and daddy but the women are always paying back daddy mm. when they're going to come out and announce at the thanksgiving dinner table that they're <laughs> lesbian at 17 it's time to pay daddy back and it's usually because daddy's a crazy religious zealot type who molested them when they were four and now his worst dreams are coming true payback. but we could get nothing from dad and i was real confused for a minute there and then turns out, Mom. And yeah. what about the fact that she thinks that this breastfeeding was a sexual thing? She's pissed at Mom. She's she's yeah. right. So she she's taking she's taking this and turning it into yeah. a sexual effect. Whatever. Yeah. Mm. Man, she must hate her mom. Jen, seventeen. Hi. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you. It's <laughs> happening. On that happy note. <laughs> um. Well, 
I have a coworker or former coworker who threatened to to rape me, and that's why he's my former coworker right now. Mm-hmm. And um, he keeps calling me, and he found out that I was scared of him because. Normally, I wouldn't take these threats seriously, but I don't know anything about his past. He just moved out here to, from New York. For some reason, he got in trouble back there. And and so I'm, like, literally scared for my life because of this, these threats that he's put out against me. Did, did he use the word rape? Yes, he did. Oh, he like, said, I'm going to rape you? Huh? Yeah. But it wasn't, like, good-natured rape? Like, hey, I'm going to rape you. Happy rape. No, it was like, he shoved me up against the wall, and he's like, I'm going to rape you. Oh. I'm going to... Sometimes, you know, when they have, like, casual day on Friday, people oh, do God. that. You know, how does he have your number? Huh? Well, he worked. He said this when they were at work. Kind of worked But then, all. yeah, how did he get your number after this? Um, before all these threats started happening, we, you know, I was... I'm a very... I'm the type of person who will be very friendly to everyone, and I was like, oh, you don't know anyone. You know... Here's my number. Call me. I'll help you get into the ring so you can have friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I gave him my number, and we'd been talking. And then these threats came out, and now I'm like, oh, my gosh, what do I do? Okay. You haven't told anybody? Um, I, the only people who know are, um, my store director and my assistant store director at work. And that's What kind of place do you work? A grocery store. And what did, uh, what did they say? Um, they, all they said is that, you know, we're going to fire him. And they did, and that's pretty much been the end of it for them. But they do not know that he's continually tried to call me. Oh, well, that, that's that's the part you were telling us you you told them. Yeah, tell them that. Get we it. we get the part where they know because we you told us he got fired, right? right. You right. need to get some self defense huh. classes and and like oh. some mace and stuff. Really? Like that. Uh-huh. Did the <laughs> threats get worse? Do anything? Or just some mace at least? Yeah. Did the threats get worse after they fired him? Um. Yeah, because it took him a while to figure out that I was one of the people who complained against him. Mm-hmm. And, but then now he's Isn't like... Isn't that weird? Huh? It seems weird that he after, you know, he was he, he, threatened, to, he threatened to rape you and then he, it took him a while to figure out, hmm, I wonder if that was one of the reasons I was not yeah. a guy. Fired. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did eat a grape over in produce so the Asian guy may have had it in for me, Mr. Takahani. <laughs> hmm. Oh. I did tell him I, I did leave a nickel on the counter, though. Must have been the chick I threatened to rape and push up against the wall. Yeah, yeah. It's got to well, be her. I wasn't the only one he threatened. Um, oh, I see. So that's why. Is he continuing to threaten anyone? Um, I'm the only one mm. because he knows the most about me. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. You, are you living on your own? No, I'm living at home still. Is uh, there anyone around there who can uh, help you out with this? Um, yeah. I just, I just haven't been able to bring myself to tell my family because I've never been encountered with such a situation. Have you tried calling police yet? Um, they, um, the friends at work, they, they, um, because the other girls who were threatened, they're like, please, please, please don't tell the cops. I don't want him to come after me, da, 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 da. So they won't, they, they're like, I mean, I have thought about it, but they don't what want. What would telling the police have to do with him coming after other people? Because he would, um, I don't know. They just yeah. think that tell I would bring totally a rat. Yeah. Tell the police. Okay. Uh, well, what, uh, what'd this guy do over there? Work, worked in the back? No, um, we both, um, I was, I'm a cashier and he was a bagger mm. and he would just, he cornered me at work one day when I was on break up in the break room. Mm. Mm-hmm. Nobody was up there. So. All right. That must Call the cops. Did you get any post-traumatic stress reaction or anything from that? No, I don't think so. Wasn't that a horrible experience? Huh? Wasn't that an awful experience? It was. It was terrible. I mean, I was frightened, but, and I still am, but I don't, I don't know. Okay, well, listen, uh, tell, the I tell the people at work, too, because I, I don't know if, they're, if they still have some uh, legal responsibility here, you know, ex-employee and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I would think. One would, uh, one would think, yeah. All right, what do you want to do? You wanna, let's, let's hear a song. All right. What song are we hearing? No Light. You, uh, well, hold on there. Hold Wait. on. Hold on. Hold on. You queued up there, Anderson? Yeah. Yeah. Anderson, you. you're saying, no. We'll play a song, then we'll go to break. So that's Anderson. That's right. (laughs) There he is. This is from Third Strike. It's called No Light. Uh, No Light from uh, Third Strike off of Lost Angel. That is the name of their CD. Jim and Eric are both here from the band. I'm in the captain's chair. Your your voice is changing. Feeling good. It's like it's it's been a tone change. (laughs) That's right. Oh, my God. Back in control. Scary. All right. We're going to take a few more calls and uh, talk to the band, do all that. But uh, first, we'll take a quick break. Hey, everybody. 
It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. The Third Strikes, our guests, Jim and Eric, are both here from the band Lost Angels, the name of the CD, and we'll hear something else off of that in the 11 o'clock hour. But, uh, you know, I, I uh, Drew, I don't know if I was talking to you about this, but I, I figured out something. Mm-hmm. It's, it's often... I'm shocked. Uh, Something that has plagued me for a while is uh, how far to stand behind the guy at the ATM when you're in a bank. Hmm. Like, what is that buffer? There's no line. I'd appreciate it if they put a line in there. Mm. But you never see a line on the ground. I'd say what? It's about about four feet, five feet, isn't it? So you can't read the PIN number. Here's what I figured out. The the guy wants a little space. You know, no one wants to be doing their business and having a guy crowd them. Right. But you don't want to be 12 feet behind him. Someone's going to slide in front of you. That seems too far. I bet you it's different here than New York, too. Less room in New York? Yeah, I bet you. Here's what I figured out. Here's what I came up with, and I was testing it out at the, uh, in the Man Show office on uh, Thursday, and it worked nicely. I mean, we, we, we got enough guys. We can try it. <laughs> You're, the distance you should be behind somebody who's at the ATM is your height lying down on the ground. Well, which is your arm width. Which is this? Yeah, this is your, your arm span. Is it the same thing? Usually, it's yeah. it's real I close. Agree. It's six feet. Yeah. Real close. Yeah. Now, I, I mean, we could do it right now. You'll see. You'll see what I'm talking no, about. I, it, I, that's what I was it, thinking. It's a perfect saying. equation yeah. it, because if a dude's seven foot, you can't set a limit, I and mean, you don't want to say everyone should be four and a half feet behind you because a seven foot guy would be intimidating at that length. On the other hand, if a guy is four and a half feet, you could have him at four and a half feet. <laughs> Whatever the height is, yeah. it feels good. We gotta go out in the hall and try this. Right, will. You stand <laughs> like you're at the ATM. These guys think we're kidding. No, no. Hold no, we'll do this. And I'm gonna lie down, and then I'll mark my head, and then I'll stand back up my feet. You'll see how good it feels. Is Drew. that really it? Yeah. You're, even for you're, dwarfs, you're, even this for is, dwarfs, that's that's the way. It's a good question. Uh, <laughs> dwarf, dwarfs, eight hundred plastic dwarfs don't have limbs. Their limbs don't grow. That's why they're short. So, so it wouldn't, wouldn't work, work for them. Okay. Well, not might. Usually, well, usually let's get a dwarf in here. You're. you're uh, your wingspan is basically roughly. your height. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, sometimes a little bit more. But uh, let's talk to uh, Lindsay, who's 17. Lindsay? Hi. What's up? Well, I was calling about the girl who had the rape threat at her grocery store. Right. And I used to work at a grocery store, and I'm just thinking she should probably go to her union. Okay. Because they'll take care of it. All right. That makes sense. The union yeah. guys will yeah, break get, his kneecaps. Get some of the yeah. teamsters <laughs> to go over there and rough them up a little bit. <laughs> Well, especially because he's probably part of the union, too. So, Well, so, well he worked there for a very short time. He got canned. Yeah. But he may be working at another grocery store. Possibly, the yeah. They have a baggers union? Yeah, yeah, they gro- do. It, it's, it's quite a racket, this uh, grocery union. You get, I know. I mean, you can be a checker. You can get, like, uh, 16 bucks an hour and a bunch of golden time and all these benefits and all, all this stuff just for checking checking bags, right? I mean... Well, yeah, and cans. I bagged groceries, and that's a lot harder. Yeah. And I only got paid half as much. Yep. That's how it works, problem sister. With that. Yeah, well, the harder you so work, easy, the less you get paid. Right, you see how easy Adam's got it now. Well, yeah. As compared to how you had to work when you were <laughs> humping drywall. Yeah. Dug ditches and clean carpets and humped drywall and got seven bucks an hour. Now yeah, I get uh, eight seventy five an hour, and I sit here and talk on the radio every night. It's just two <laughs> hours, so you know after tax about fifteen dollars. But uh, now, a lot, now I work in the easier. insurance department, in the claims department, and I work harder, and I don't get paid as much either. Yeah, well, baby, you're seventeen. What do you want? Yeah, what are all these jobs by seventeen? Yeah. Which <laughs> working did you do? <laughs> I've been working a long time. What's up? Were you emancipated minor? No. Okay. Wow! Can you imagine seventeen at one, that checker job by seventeen? Are you kidding? You would have killed for it. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. I wasn't a checker. I was a bagger. Right. Uh, All right, baby. You going to school too? I graduated high school. And you just uh... now I'm getting married. Mm. Oh. Wow! You, you'll be dead by twenty four, and people will go, <laughs> "Yeah, she had a good long life." <laughs> Accomplished. She had. Uh, yeah, she yeah. graduated high school at fourteen. Three different she careers. Was, uh, working yeah, as a claims investigator at fifteen and a half. Married <laughs> at uh, seventeen. Four kids. Four kids <laughs> by the time she was nineteen, and uh, she oh, died. She no had grandkids. Way. Everyone was around her bed when she died at twenty-four. <laughs> <laughs> she went peacefully in her sleep, natural causes. I'll have you write my eulogy. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> I'll start off with. Uh, I didn't know her, but uh, she called the show in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, baby. Take care. All right. All right. Good times. Good night. Right. Yeah, don't get married. Oh, why, <laughs> why not? She's, she's, she's actually 48. She's 17. 17. Going on 47. What the hell? Yeah. All right. Yeah. She, she <laughs> really want to get married? How old is your uh, fiance? 19. Mm. That That's soon, huh? 
Young yeah. love. Why yeah. so soon? She only got to 24. Oh, that's right. Yeah. All right. right. Yeah, I'm dying soon, I guess. Right. All right, baby. All right. Take care of yourself. All and right. If you should have, like, the rest of us live to 75, 80, you may think this is a little bit premature. Yeah. When you're looking back 60 years. It's weird. There's, uh, isn't it weird those uh, handful of kids or adolescents or teenagers to just decide, look, uh, I'm not. I'm not going to. My friends stretch their adolescence into their late thirties. What are you talking about? Well, they're still going. Thank you. They're still going. <laughs> a lot of them. But some people just go. You know, I got. They get a steady boyfriend or girlfriend. The first year of high school, they graduate. They start working, and they just set up shop. I mean, they just they set up house at like eighteen, and you run into them at like twenty, and it's like they got a kid on their on their arm. They're driving a minivan, and they're into it. I don't understand that. Aren't you supposed to try to prolong that period of your life? It's a different people? breed of person. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, some totally. people, yeah. I don't trust that breed. Amanda? <laughs> Hi, Adam. You're 19? Yes. What's up? Oh, okay. First, I just want to say hi to you and Drew because you guys are awesome. Adam, Thanks. you're gorgeous. <laughs> 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 yeah. and I, I'm glad you're single because it means I still have a snowball's chance in hell. No, no. I have a girlfriend. Oh, you do? Yeah, but how old are you, 19? Uh, yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> What's all up? All right, all right. Well, I guess this means I have to quit stalking you. Mm. Well, facts over a picture. Yeah. Eric will take you. <laughs> all right, anyway. Um, Third strike in the studio. Go ahead. Okay, um, uh, this discussion's mainly for Drew, but of course Adam can put his, his input any time. And uh, so, Drew, you know about, like, gender dysphoria where mm. people think they're born into the wrong gender right but is there such a thing that's been documented as racial dysphoria why not yeah somebody born into the wrong race I, i'm a i'm a you know uh, i'm a i'm a i'm a zulu caught in a alaskan white body. yeah white man's body I mean, you know why not yeah. well, it's the I same kind of thing i just wondered because i think that's something that i kind of how would we make the conversion though well, maybe Michael Jackson, maybe. Uh, <laughs> well, what is he becoming? He's becoming a Martian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm becoming a white guy, is he? He's lighting his skin. What are, you, what are you trying to become, Amanda? Or what, oh. are you, what are you stuck in? You're white? Yeah, I'm white. And I feel like I, I was born of the wrong race, and I feel like I should be a Japanese girl. Why? What does that mean? <laughs> he should I, It's just like I feel more attracted to that culture. I just don't feel right you know sometimes you can't you know people like a girl who thinks she's she should be a guy you know yeah but we there's no reason you can't just uh it's a preference and why can't you just be with asian people and indulge in that culture and enjoy just as if you enjoyed certain kind of you know food or dress or anything else well, yeah but it's still there's still kind of that uncomfortable feeling that and you should you should be asian yourself yeah hmm how are you a math uh, lousy. Um, that's the problem. <laughs> that's strike one. <laughs> They're never going to let you in. Never. I tried. You understand? Well, I failed well, algebra. They wouldn't let me in. I, I thought I, I thought that was just a male requirement. No. The women need to be good at math, too. Have you lived in Japan? Uh, no, but I want to. I think well, they'll, they'll give Japan? you a math pass if you can play the violin. Well, then, exactly. Can you play the violin? Yes. You can? Yes. Huh. All right. Well, that cancels out the math thing. All right. We're back but, on but, track. I mean, you meet people all the time that love French or Italian. They want to go live there. Same thing. It's the same yeah. thing. Just because right. people look a little different, we want to put more emphasis on it. But no, it's the same thing. You just that you like that you admire the culture. You yeah. enjoy it. You go go indulge. You you you, uh, you can learn the language and do the whole thing, right? Yeah, I've learned I've learned a lot of the language already. I'm definitely by no means fluent, but we just head over there and just enjoy. It. I understand why you have to make it a. I think she, I think you'll be a little disappointed. T day old pie. Well, it's just you know I, I don't think I've really blown it out of proportion. I mean, I don't. It doesn't keep me awake at night. But you know, well, you're, you're, you're wanting to make it a pathology, and I, I would suggest you not and think of it more in terms of a preference. But let me tell you, I think they're going to disappoint you, those Asians. Let me tell you something. My take on the Asian culture. Okay. It's like uh, the Asian culture is like a blonde chick from across the bar when you're drunk, <laughs> but when you get up close, sometimes it's like uh, not so good. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? From afar, good. You get right in the middle of it, it's bad. You, you know what I mean? It's too crowded. They eat a lot of uh, fish heads. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> they, they kill, like, a lot of endangered species. They get their penis to be bigger. And they, 
Rhino <laughs> horn. Oh, rhino horn harvesting and a bear pancreas. And, uh, you know, they do a lot of whaling and that kind of stuff. <laughs> they, they screw over the women, too, a lot of the time. Yeah? Right? I, I guess. Yeah. All right. Well, well go over there. Drew, we don't I need you. Ask one more thing. It yes. applies to this. Hmm? Yes. Um, I also, I thought might have it have, might, part of it might have to do with the fact that I'm adopted and I don't know any of my racial background at all. Oh, that's interesting. So Wouldn't that be interesting if she were Asian somehow? No, she's not, but she's, she wants to sign herself something. But, yeah, but what if she were? I mean, maybe she doesn't look it, but maybe she had a... Well, maybe, she would look it. You would look it. Uh, some, you know... Maybe, Wouldn't you? Some, I never met probably. anyone who was like a, a quarter well, Asian that didn't look Asian. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. No, no. This is sneak no. by. This really? is sneak by like that. The closest thing I can imagine that I have is I have a pretty round face and I have, uh, like, kind of small eyes <laughs> that, yeah. are, that are not quite so round. How's mm-hmm. your rack? Well, that's just beady. <laughs> that's not slanty. Sounds like a Martian. How's hey. the rack? How's the rack? Uh, 36C. Yeah, C's a little big for the Asians. They're B crowd. Yeah, but again, it's not all, not one hundred percent here. All right, look, look, you, uh, you pick whatever food you like the best and make yourself that one. Wouldn't that be fascinating? That, that's though? the way if I she would had do an it. Asian mom or something. That'd be fascinating. No, don't, true. Don't get her going. Yeah, if but, I didn't know what my ethnicity was, I would decide what my favorite food was and call myself that. But this is like those kids that are born male and they slough the penis off in an accident and they raise them female and they they never can get it. They never. They're constantly like. Wanting to do these male things, and they never, you know. Well, can you can you can you figure yeah. out? If, if, so, if you're adopted, well, people who are adopted then may not know their nationality, right? Mm-hmm. I suppose not. But I mean, if you if you look in the mirror and you have fair skin and fair fair uh, hair, we could we could do the math. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could narrow it down to a dozen countries or something like that, right? But mm-hmm. there's no test, right? I mean, couldn't get a, a semen sample and figure out where you're from. I imagine with the Human Genome Project, that will be possible, I bet. Eventually, we'll Eventually, be able to yeah, do that, soon. right? Yeah, pretty soon. It'll we'll take a little swab with the well, saliva people, people and still, figure out where you're from. There's still all kinds of debate about what race even is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a so that's my plan. I want to get that genome project going. I want to I want to code everybody and then start setting up camps. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad camps. Camp has such a Fun negative... Camps. Con- yes. Fun camp. Happy camp. Summer camp. Irish camp, mm. Italian camp, African camp. A Chinese camp, but a bunch of camps, and then we could go have like slumber parties and sleepovers and stuff. But we knew where to get the best food. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, if you wanted Italian that night, you know where to this, go. This right? is all a reaction. You being pissed off that there's no Italy, little Italy in Los Angeles. Well, there should be a little <laughs> Italy in Los Angeles for Christ's sake. We're we're big enough, big enough city that we should have a little Italy, right? Yeah, well, your, not, your camps will take care of that. We're not asking for big or even medium Italy. We're asking for little Italy. You think they could pull it's in that San off. Pedro? Is that where it is? It is. It, they got a little Italy over it's there. It's hiding over there. Yeah, little Italy and little Yugoslavia. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. It's big out there. We have to get out there. All right, we'll uh, take ourselves a uh, little break. Third strike is uh, our guest tonight, and when we come back, we'll speak to Lindsay. She's twenty-one, got pregnant, and now the guy's going nuts, being self-destructive. I guess this is the father. Mm. We'll talk to him or her after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Jim and Eric are both here tonight for the third strike. Lost Angels, the name of the CD. It is out. These guys are going to be on the uh, Warp Tour and uh, on the OzFest Tour. And that's coming up uh, this summer. Starting, which one starts first? Warp Tour. Warp Tour. The CD comes out Tuesday. All right. So, uh... Two days from now. I always think it's Monday, but we'd start the show on Sunday, don't we? Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> All right, but it's good on uh, Friday, right, Drew? Good. Good times. Yeah. Lindsay? Yeah? You're 21? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, I got pregnant from this guy who I don't know very well. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's in a fraternity. He's in Sigma Chi. Yep. And nope. No. Yeah, no I don't way. believe you. No, I don't believe you. <laughs> no, he is. No, so, no, no, no. We believe he's in that fraternity. We just don't believe that this is a real call. Why? Why would you give the fraternity out? I, he, you don't know where he's, what state he lives in, or what city he's in. Oh, why? Or what school he's in. <clears throat> why would you add that piece of information as to which fraternity he was a part of? Because it's a big one. Busted. 
<laughs> yeah, but people when they're having very uh, difficult experiences don't want detail. They don't want to expose. What they want to just have a, a anonymous conversation about it. All right, but but Lindsay, right? You're not the smartest girl in the world, are you? I'm. I think I'm pretty smart. But you couldn't be an Asian, could you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not an Asian. All right, you're not Asian material, are you? I'm white. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm saying. <laughs> You're white for now, and that's how you're going to stay, right? Right. Right, but you're not Asian material. No. You don't play the violin? No. You uh, you don't have an abacus or a calculator up your ass, right? Sure don't. All right. So, she may have made that comment because uh, she wasn't too sharp. That's all right. All right. Go ahead, Lindsay. So... Asian wouldn't have gotten pregnant out of... Uh, out of marriage this way, out of wedlock. <laughs> Certainly not from Sigma Chi. Yeah. I didn't plan for this to happen. How That's long? what I'm saying. An Asian would have planned. How long have you been into this pregnancy? Um, about five weeks. Okay. Five weeks? How did you find out you were pregnant? Um, well, I was on depo, and um, I was, like, like starting to spot, so I went into um, my school's health center, and they were like, okay, well, we'll just randomly do a pregnancy test, and it was... Positive. Were you late on the depot? Um, no, not at all. So you got pregnant on the depot shot? Yeah. Wow. Which which is even stranger. So and he knew I was on depot and so he was like, Well, if if you got pregnant on depot, this is meant to be, you shouldn't have an abortion, whatever, whatever, whatever. But he's acting really, really crazy. What's he doing? Um He's his room. Well, I just went up and saw him today because he lives two hours away. Mm -hmm. But I went up and saw him today, and his roommates told me he's been sleeping till like three or four o'clock, not going to class, and like drinking a lot. And I've talked to him like numerous times, and he's drunk, he's at bars, I mean, he's trashed, and he's doing a lot of ecstasy, Mm -hmm. which is not something that I knew that he was doing before. Mm -mm -mm. He needs some help here. Well, I want to tell his dad. Well, how do you know his dad? Well, I don't. Well, I don't really know his dad. I've never met him, but I know what his name is, and I know their phone number. Can so. you can you just haul his ass to student services, student health services, and just What's she gonna get him? Go. She goes up there and visits, and get him, you know, get him in there, and her call, get an appointment, and then show up, get it there, have your, his friends help him get yeah. his butt in there, and and see if they well, can. Well, were you guys, you guys weren't even boyfriend and girlfriend, right? No, and we're still not. That's the point. Do you want to? Do you want to be boyfriend and girlfriend with him? Yeah, I do. Do you want to have sure. this child? Um, yeah, I do. Was your dad an alcoholic? No, not at all. Mom? No. And what are you what are you doing now? Are you going to college? Yeah, I go to school and I work for a big retailer. All right. It's and be hard with a kid doing both yeah. those things. In fact, okay. impossible. Do you want to give the kid up for adoption? I don't. I don't think, as a woman, I would be able to do that. No, but right. as somebody who's trying to make a decision for a child, that's the best thing for the child. Wouldn't that be a nice thing to do? You know, Barbara Walters had a special last week about adoption and things, and I think it was Barbara's daughter was saying that she always felt she's becoming Asian. She well, she with is with all yes. the plastic yeah. surgery. Yeah, but she she was saying her daughter was saying that she always felt that her biological mother had been the bravest and most loving mother because of her making a choice on behalf of the child even though it was painful to the mother oh. she made a decision on behalf of the child yeah well she said she didn't think she could do it as a mother but as an adult you should be able to do it yeah. you know what i mean this yeah. is the problem we're, we're having people that their mothers by by virtue of the fact that they're having a kid i mean any any time a kid pops out of your vagina technically your mother. True, that happened to you, right? Came right, up, right out. Yeah, three. Came right three, out of your vagina. Right vagina. <laughs> but, Actually, on my urethra. But we got a lot of 16, 17, 18, and young people that uh, technically they're going to be moms, but it'd be better if they were just better adults and did the adult thing and made the mature yeah, decision. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And, and you listen, your, your nearly boyfriend here, the father of your child, needs some help, and it sounds like he's getting into some behaviors that could be cause life, lifelong damage, perhaps. Yeah. But what is she supposed to do? I mean, she I, lives two hours away. Yeah, again, He's not around when she goes his over there. Friends, get him in there. Call the dual services. See what right. they've got available. Right. And if ultimately you have to, yeah, calling the dad is not a bad thing to do. To, you got to do whatever you have to do. All right, he but don't. That, he told me that if I called his dad, it was it would ruin his life, and his dad wouldn't support him anymore. Well, don't don't expect whatever you do. Don't expect it to enhance this boyfriend girlfriend uh, fantasy you have because <laughs> I, I'm not sure that's meant to be. 
Drew, you were in uh, college, you were uh, Chi Delta, Chi Delta something, what were you? Were you something? Uh, well, I lived at Chi Phi, I hung out with, I, said, really? I took some time off from college, I missed, oh, yeah. Yeah, I missed all that stuff. Hung out with Chi Psi. Mm. Why? I was just, uh, just curious. No, I never just really joined curious. a fraternity. Jared? Yeah? What's up? Yeah, um, whenever I masturbate, I one time almost passed out. Uh, Jared, a boy? Jared, the uh, Jared, the guy. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you, you're uh, maybe starting too young. I don't know. Is it when you climax? I don't pass? believe him. Gonna warm up. Are you hyperventilating? No. Yeah, I always skip about ten minutes of rope before I beat off. Yeah. Try sure to get the blood circulating. Jared. Yeah. Have you have you done this successfully before? Yes. Yeah. Uh, masturbation. Yeah. All right. And uh, were you uh, standing up? Don't beat off in the shower because that's where uh, they'll find you. No, I don't. You understand? You'll you'll get lightheaded. You whack your head on a soap dish and you'll drown in three inches of water. You actually shouldn't be afraid to tell your doctor about this if you're alone with a physician and realize it is probably just some hyperventilation and mm-hmm. there's some bearing down. Maybe the vagal your vagus nerve puts out some medic some yeah. hormones, some, some chemicals and that slows your heart down. It's probably okay. just holding his breath for too long. And yeah, or, yeah it's, it's the bearing down, the hyperventilation. Yeah, you forget about the necessities. I mean, the basics. You yeah. stop breathing. My heart stops beating when I beat off. <laughs> Lung stop function. Of course. Yeah. 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 Of course. I uh, pull a, a calf muscle every once in a while. Go for that toe point. Yeah. Jared? Yeah. So, talk to the doctor? Yeah, and just pay yeah. attention to your breathing. All right? All right, buddy? Okay. All right, all right good times, all right? Okay, I love your show. Yeah. Love your penis. <laughs> no, that's what he's doing. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. what you're doing. Oh, yeah. yeah, all right there, buddy. We're going to take a little break. Third Strike is our guest, and we'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Third Strike is our guest tonight. Jim and Eric are here from the band. Lost Angels, the name of the CD, and it is out this Tuesday. Yes. All right. So Tiffany is on line one. She's 25 years old. And her question is... Tiffany? You. Am I on? You're on. I'm oh, sorry. That's all right. Hey, um, I was calling. I was wondering what I should do. I every time I'm with my husband, I'm imagining him as a famous person. I'm not going to say who, but I'm obsessed with him, and it's kind of damaging to my marriage. Why? How long have you been and married? I've been married five years. And how long have you been having this obsession? The past year. And anything change in your marriage? Oh, well, my husband's noticed that he's been mentioning it to me. That what? That that I I'm not the the most into him. He seems it seems like. And yet, by thinking of this other person, you're able to respond to him. What's that? By thinking of this other person, you're able to respond to him. Um. Yeah. I mean, I totally close my eyes and envision him. Yeah. And you know he's been thinking of Jennifer Love Hewitt the whole time. He's been on top of you, so it's only it's only fair. But was anything changed in the relationship over? I mean, other than this preoccupation you had, is there anything changed that up to the time when you developed this preoccupation? You know what I'm saying? Was anything already going on in the relationship besides this? Or say, I mean, like before this, really leading up to this, was there a new a child? Is there no? Uh, is well, there, I have a child, yes. Is he is he not available the way you need him to be? Is he at work more? Is there something else going on? No, I I wouldn't say that. Well, I, we have a child that is very involved, meaning mentally hand, handicapped. Uh, and so, um, and he's two years old. And oof. so, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I, it kind of makes me feel like I, it's, you know, if I think of him as this person, I think of, I don't have to deal with my life. Who's well, the who's escapism. the person? Who's the person? Uh, oh, oh, the person I'm thinking of. Yeah, <laughs> Brad Pitt. No, okay. no, oh, Brad's so beautiful. No, it's um, Ben Affleck. Ben, ben Affleck. But it'll be Brad tonight, right? <laughs> now you mention it. Now let yeah. me ask you something. Let me you ask know. Drew. Let me ask you a quick uh, question about retarded kids. Yeah. You know, okay. they have all these. Every time you see, like, they go well. He's 20 years old, but mentally he's like seven. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? 
But yeah. when he was seven, was he like uh, a negative. zygote? Yeah, was he negative? negative? Uh, <laughs> I mean, what was he? At, at a certain point, don't you got to be what you are? Well, I mean, hey. how far how far into your mom can you get? Do you know are what I'm saying? About, hey, wait, are you talking about kids? Like, yeah. Really kids? Um, I'm talking, my, t- my child's only two. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, to do with Wyatt, my son, Wyatt, is, um, has a rare gene disorder, and he's like a paraplegic. Yeah. Oh. So he, he's into me as much as any kid can be into a mom, because I know I can see it in his eyes. So that's totally different, and no, I don't think that, uh, I don't think, you know, any other mentally retarded children are, I'm sure, I've seen other children, they're totally different. And the, there's all kinds of, dis, you know, we don't Wait, really... That didn't answer my I, question. I know, let me just say, there's all kinds of dysfunctions of the brain. Right. And the right brain, the part that we use to connect and communicate emotionally with uh, other people, are sometimes right. is intact, even though the cognitive elements are completely gone. In right. terms of how the development occurs, it's a little, it's a sort of more of a formula like dog years. Right. It yeah. accelerates for a while and decelerates at times. And it, right. it, there's no direct relationship. It's like this kid's delayed. Well, maybe you're right with the dog thing. Maybe at like four, you're like a puppy. Right. I mean, like another species. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> see. Tiffany? So, yeah. so is your child ever going to be okay, or is it always going to no, be... No, he's, he's, he just had a second stroke, actually, oh, and he died from the second stroke. Wow. But, I, uh, I think, listen... Oakland is wonderful, I have to say. But, I'm, but, I'm like, the, Tiffany, I think absolutely that your instinct that this is a way to be sort of taken away and transported from your life. Just, you know, adolescents do this, too, right? They get these preoccupations with bigger-than-life rock stars and celebrities and things. And yeah. it, it's, a, it's a way of being taken away right. and, and being feeling safe. Why does your husband have to know about it, though. <laughs> Should I not tell him? Yeah, don't tell yeah, him. It's it, a decent plan. To me, it's, it's one of the things that suggests to me is that you're depressed. And I, You think I'm depressed? I, I, it suggests to me that you're probably depressed. So, it's like, yeah. Maybe if I just met Ben, I, my <laughs> depression would go yeah, away. No, but now you're thinking like a 14-year-old. Yeah. You understand? That's the, fun to be 14, though, right? He, 14? He, yeah, but you're not. You're 25 and you have an impaired I, I, child. Ironically... The 25 year old Tiffany is uh, 14 emotionally. Have you ever called out Ben's name? What, when I'm having sex? Yeah. Um, uh, no, no, I haven't. All right, but if you do, don't tell, do that. Yeah, tell him it's uh, Ben Gazzara, <laughs> uh, an older guy. He won't be as, he won't feel as threatened. All right? Ben Gazzara. Okay. Yeah. Name of the game, 1972, <laughs> right? Well, wait a minute. He was, uh, he was in that Patrick Swayze movie where he's a bouncer, too. So that was a that was a fine uh, yeah. fine film, great movie. Yeah, Roadhouse. Yeah. That's right. He ran the evil town till uh, Swayze blew it. Oh, that was Ben Gazzara. Yeah, yeah. Ben Gazzara was uh, was the heavy in that. Oh, that's right after it was Zapped. It was a great film. Oh, I'll tell you. Now Zap, you know Zap was a was a uh, movie, but Roadhouse was a film. You see? Mm. Yeah. They glad, glad you know the difference. Best cooler in the business, that Patrick Swayze. I always like those movies when a bouncer rolls into town and everyone knows who he is. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a big scene. Yeah. Bouncer scene. Yeah, they're in some small town in the middle well, of nowhere, and they're like, yeah, I've heard about him. He's the best. Well, bouncers went <laughs> like, through a, a romantic period similar to the truck drivers. Went yeah. Through a period too. I think Mr. T got yeah. that going in <laughs> the uh, later 70s. Yeah. He's put, making a comeback. He put bouncers on the map. But if everyone just kind of closes their eyes and scratches their brain and thinks, could you really name one bouncer? Besides uh, Mr. T and Patrick Swayze, best in the business. Sophia? Yes. Yeah, he called it a cooler, though. That's yeah. bouncer talk for bouncer. Turn your radio off. They called it a what? Turn your radio off. It's off. All right, what's up? Okay. They, ca- they called it a what? Just go ahead, baby. <laughs> oh. You ever see Roadhouse? I thought you said they called it a cooler, and I'm like, eh. Whatever. Okay, baby. Uh, how much time do you have to waste of yours before you get <laughs> to your goddamn question? Not too much. Right. Okay, here's my question. Um, I'm 22 years old. She's so checking out groceries. Yeah. She's, yeah. Yeah. She's now. bagging. Yeah, check I'm not like That's a car, out here, right? Trying to hang out. You know, I've, I've got things going on. I've got a boyfriend, 28, and he's a big football player guy, and we've been dating for about a year and a half. And... Um, when we started dating, I really wanted to get him into toys, and I wanted to get him into, like, a strap-on. Yeah. And it took me a while, but I, I convinced him to do Like, I convinced him to, to let me go, let me buy the strap-on. We spent, like, $200 on it. We got everything going. and wow. he's Gold-plated. He's, Jesus. No, it's not gold-plated. It's called the Nexus. 
Who? Right. He's really into it. The strap on. Yeah, seriously. Right. You use it on him? I use it on him. Right. Mm. Anally type thing. Sure, sure. We did the math. Okay. (laughs) He could have gone his vagina. (laughs) Now that he's really into it, I'm starting to wane. It, like it's just it's something that that's not as exciting as it was. At he's got to not time. want it. He's got it's got to make him feel bad in order for you to be into but, it. No, not really. It's just weirding you out that he's so into it. I don't. Maybe, maybe I don't know. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like either that or now I want it to be even something more because we went through the stages, like the sizes of what it was going to be. Yeah, you you, know? you, you gradually built up the size of the strap on. Exactly, yeah. Until uh, eventually it was like a, a bowling pin on a Lewis <laughs> <Lewis's> horse <laughs> harness. Yeah. Jesus The, the pummeler. Oh, my yeah. God. What's up with you, baby? You know? Kinky. Nothing. I'm actually a really normal girl. Like, I just, I just, I had the, well, no. before I started dating him, I dated, um, I don't know if it makes a difference, but I dated a, a woman for a year and a half. Right. Uh-huh. Oh so getting out of that, maybe oh. there was still well, may- something. Maybe you just, maybe she just saw the strap on and figured you were a dude, and didn't <laughs> she ever? No. Did she ever know? No. Okay. It was always dark. How much porn do you watch? Uh, a little. Yeah, uh, Sophia, uh, you got well, a lot. Well, what's up with you, yeah, baby? You got, you got a lot of energy. On. Got stuff going on. Something happened well, to you? Maybe that's it. What do you mean? <laughs> Anyone molest you? Yeah, when I was younger. All right, well, that—that's what. From that. Yeah, we, we magically we magically <laughs> pounced upon this, but it couldn't have anything to do with it. Brilliant deduction. That's yeah, what. That's you're what. You're all over the map. That's baby. what creates this, Sophia. Seriously, though, here's the thing. It's like I've been through my therapy. I've I've dealt with my devils, and I've I've gone through life and graduated from college, and I'm I'm well on my way. You know, it's like it's not like I I've, I've spent my life trying to figure out who I am. I know who I am, and I'm in a great relationship, but I just keep wanting to take things to another level yeah kind of right and this this is having been sexually abused it makes it difficult to have arousal without all these sort of the same kinds of shamey experiences you had you need to bring into your arousal experiences well this is actually the first time that i've ever been able to climax with in my entire life do you climax when you have the strap on on no i don't he does though he does yeah with uh, no no stimulation to his junk? No, there's stimulation, too. I mean, it's, it's a double-edged sword thing. Huh. It goes both ways, but... No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're violating him with this strap-on, right? It's not a violation. Oh. All right, well, for violating lack of a better term. Entering okay. him. Yes. There you go. For those of us sitting here, it's a violation. But it's yeah. not a, its not entering like the Avon lady. It's entering like when the strike force goes in to get a, a prisoner who won't come out of a cell. It's, a, out. it's that kind of thing. It's, it's five a bat, guys. It's a batting ram to the crack Five house. guys in a football yeah. uniform, yeah. all bum rushing. Yeah. Some black guy in his underpants <laughs> who's urinating on them through the bars. <laughs> that's the kind of—that's the kind of entering it is. All right, so so you you enter him, and then uh, he's in a doggy position. No, he's on his back. Oh, he is. Oh, Hold on a How do you do that? <laughs> why did it become weirder <laughs> yeah. when he got on his back? I don't know why. When he was on, I had him in my mind's eye. I had him uh, on all fours. I had him yeah, doggy. He was there, yeah. And her, her behind him. Is and she, I, I was he... emotionally okay with that. Yeah. And then I found out he was, he was missionary. Now it got weird. He must be in her at the same time. No. I don't, uh-huh. Can you uh-huh. do that? No, she's I don't saying know. that she's... Doing I, a man giving him a hand job at the same time. Right, I think he's given him a hand job. He's given him. Sophia? Bingo. Yes. Bingo. He's, he's who's doing the manipulation of his junk? Well, both of us. We switch off, but it's me usually. Who finishes him off though? I mean when the when the time comes. I do. I do. You. So you're giving him the hand and the strap on. Yes. Wow. And uh and then you have the uh, orgasm when he uh, then has sex with you, right? Well, no, because I when I do that, I don't. We don't really. I mean, he's done. So well, therefore, well, I'm, where do you get your yeah. orgasm? I don't. I don't. That's unless I deal. get it beforehand. But you you were talking about having an orgasm with the guy. Right, but that's only when we have intercourse. That's the only yeah. way we... That's the no, only yeah, way okay. We all right. You need, you need a chalkboard with some of these people. Yeah, yeah. if I had right. a chalkboard, yeah, I'd hit her on the head with it. <laughs> uh, Sophia, listen. So anyway, these these overwhelming experiences in childhood are what make it difficult to have um, 
routine kinds of arousal experiences in adulthood. And it, it, it is, are you an alcoholic or an addict also? Oh, no. Uh-uh. Have you ever been? No, never. I've, it, never. I've never taken a single drug. Well, this, right. this is her This is her. This, form. this may be. Is there, have you have a family history of alcoholism? No. All right. Not, not, well, I mean, a little bit here and there, but not right. really. Yeah, I guess. I guess. But All right. She, she, you, she, you either are a sexual compulsive or a sexual addict. And if you have the gene for addiction, that's... Those two together make addiction. But having been sexually abused can make you highly sexually compulsive. And that's kind of the road you're going down, where you can't find normal arousal and routine kinds of experiences. And you, treat, you keep trying to couple it with experiences of shame and the kinds of highly overwhelming experiences you had in childhood. And eventually you're going to start feeling guilty and you start exactly what you're experiencing. You're starting to turn off and push your partner away. It, it sort of doesn't, doesn't feel good anymore at a certain point. Was this the Ben Affleck call? No, yeah, different, 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 different. Oh. Does does he have balls? Does that strap on him balls? Or? <laughs> no. No? no well, yeah, two hundred bucks, no balls. It does. It does. It does. Thank it does. you. Two hundred dollars. Thank, thank goodness. And the, you had to get by the leather part too. But Sophia, I Separately, would suggest huh? you look into the National Council on Sexual Addiction and Compulsivity because these things actually have specific treatments. You'd have to go to somebody who's used to dealing with these behavioral compulsive compulsions, and uh, you, although you've dealt with the psychodynamic and the ther- that stuff. There is still some leftover remnant physiology of having been through those experiences, and yeah. they have very specialized treatments. How do uh, how does she up the ante, by the way, sexually with this chap? I mean, she's saying she wanted to up the ante. He huh? will be pulling a wagon dressed as a pony one of these days. Oh, you know what I'm really? saying? Oh yes. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. And he can still get the whips and the violence and all that stuff going too. Yeah, that's so, one I of think- those. Yeah. I think she's getting weirded out that he's so into it, though. Yeah, it's it's making it's it's actually her bringing her into the that space where yeah. she's trying to get, and all of a sudden it's guilt and shame, and oh my god, it's awful, and so where she where she thinks she needs to go to be aroused ends up being not such a fun fun place. Does it have to be sexual abuse that pushes you that way, or mm. could you just be desensitized by watching porn so much? Mm, it's an interesting question. We've kind of wondered about that. Well, there's, there's no for data women. About that. For women, it usually should be some abuse. For for guys, some physical abuse can sort of send you down that path, but not quite as intensely as what Sophia's got. Yeah. Mm. As, as a guy, though, who's a missionary and getting it with the strap on, don't you just have to look up at some point and wonder what your gender is? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Not your gender. What your, what your just, life's all yeah, about. What, Where what is your like, yeah, What, what the hell on? am I doing? You yeah. got some chick up here banging the bejesus out of me right now. <laughs> Easy. That's a bad visual. <laughs> oh, yeah. I still don't get on the back part. I still can't get the that. The guy's probably like, listen, I, I didn't take my pill, so pull out. <laughs> <laughs> What's on the, on the back? Not on the belly. <laughs> Not on the belly. <laughs> Cradle the balls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're 23. Yeah. What's up? Um, I'll, do you guys want the background first or the question? Question. Um... I'm wondering whether or not I should tell my ex-girlfriend that I may have chlamydia. Why wouldn't you? Yes. Uh, well, see, here's the problem. I, I got a call from the girl I'm seeing now, and she got a pap smear. And the doctor told her that she had chlamydia. All right. So, of course, I go to the doctor. And he didn't do a test on me because it, I wasn't I didn't have the slow drip or anything. I well, it kind of doesn't matter. If she's got it, you've got to be treated for right, it. Right, that's what he said. So now I'm taking antibiotics. Good. Um, do you but, think you got it from the new girlfriend? Or does yeah. she think she got it from you? She thinks she got it from me, and I don't really know. And so I'm trying to figure you know, out. You should take the, you should take the advice of her doctor. If uh, if he thinks it's something new, uh, then probably you're going to have to tell your old girlfriend. If he thinks it is something that she may have had for a while that you now contracted, then he, let him advise you what to do. Is that my my doctor or her doctor? Her doctor, because it's kind of a weird situation. Or his. You can ask your doctor too, of course. But it's kind of a weird situation. I mean, do you want to unnecessarily? You know, alarm this ex girlfriend, or is it really an important and ethical thing to do? Well, I, I don't want to alarm her, but I know she's seen somebody new now, mm. and uh, you know, I, I prefer not talk to her. You know, but if I, it wouldn't surprise me if I got it from her, I guess. Mm. I mean, but if you did get it from her, she probably already knows she has it, then, right? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. But yeah. that's the thing about chlamydia—you can have it for a long time. Don't know it, yeah. Yeah, well, see, that's what I was—I was trying to figure out because I wasn't showing any signs. I didn't, you know, it didn't hurt when I peed or anything like that. So I was wondering if maybe I just didn't have it. Oh, well, maybe it's, really it's hard. possible, it's but possible. they just treat it anyway. They right? treat it anyway. That's right. All right. So what so, do we think he should do? 
Well, I, I'm trying. I'm debating whether or not I need to give my old girlfriend a call. It's, up. it's not. Know, it's right. not an absolute. We're saying it's not an absolute must. I'm saying take the direction of the people whose responsibility, from a public health standpoint, it is in fact to direct you on this one. All right. Let's. Uh, I want to talk to Ashley here. Ashley. Hi. Sixteen. Yeah. What's up? Um, I have like a lot of excess hair on my body where I think like for a girl I shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. You can't be an Asian. <laughs> not gonna make it. Unfortunately, not. God, Adam, neither you. Yeah, I'm a mess. What's your uh, What's your nationality? You got one of them hairy nationalities? Oh God, please don't tell me it's hereditary. But I'm half Persian. Yeah. And um, guess and the other half is just like like English, Canadian, Dutch type of thing. And your family is there a lot of hair? Well, um. Not really. Like no, just, on the Persian side, it's like, well, it's it's not really. Cause, like okay. I look at my mom, and she's like, she's not really like that. All right, hold on. I, I, are you overweight? No, just probably by ten pounds, but that's it. Do you have irregular periods? Well, now I do because I'm um I've been like taking the pills. And I thought that, like that might help it somehow, but help the hair. Yeah. Yeah, that, that sometimes does. So where is it? Is it on your lip or on your arms or downstairs or? It's like it's on it's on like on my stomach. Like I shave my stomach now, and it's on my back, and it's also on my my butt and everything. It's really like yeah. it's just really yeah. bad. It's just like yeah. everywhere, and it's like you mean like your low your low back, like right? Yeah. Yeah. Now women don't get on the upper back. Do no. They? Mm-hmm. We sh- we could never have kids, Ashley, because uh, their their well, they, rear ends would be a mess. They wouldn't be. <laughs> a ton of hair. Not human hands. kids, no. Yeah, apple stop. Be like good. Uh, yeah. What about what about one of these uh, light treatments? Laser. Um, it's too it's expensive for me. Too but, expensive. Like, I used to have um, electric, but it really hurts, and yeah. it got too expensive after a while. Wow. Yeah. What, hey, Drew? Aren't they gonna? They must be working on some kind of pill. Is well, there are, there's a, yeah, there are a number of different things. Really? Well, even something as simple as something called aldactone, they sometimes will give. H- how does that work on your ass hair, not on your eyebrows and your head hair? Does it grow back in? It works on your body hair, yeah, it does. Because that, that's very highly dependent on androgens and circulating hormones. So, I mean, you will, you will have uh, pubic hair. I mean, you'll have, like, uh, eyebrows, hair. eyelashes, head hair. Yeah. But if you lower the uh, androgens, yeah, it could, y- it'll work on your forearm hair and your ass hair and that kind of stuff. The cheek and stuff, yeah. Well, maybe yeah. she should. Who should she talk to? Then? An endocrinologist. There, there are also at least a, there's several other different conditions that women commonly get that can cause this. Something called polycystic ovarian disease and congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Sometimes there are various hormonal conditions that can cause this that have their own specific treatments. Do you have a boyfriend? Oh no, of course not. Too insecure. Oh, is it insecure about the hair? Or? Yes. Some guys like that. Yeah, there's like some, some older guys on the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Strange guys. No, Ashley, I know, you know, it, it sounds, it, it's like, it's, it sounds comical, but I mean, this is fairly devastating to and, a 16 year old girl and these days. fairly common, and fairly common, too. Right. Yeah. So I would start with the endocrinologist and then. Oh, endocrinologist? Endocrinologist, yeah. And then you see somebody like a plastic surgeon, that sort of thing. Somebody who's doing these light therapies and hair removal therapies. Sometimes gynecologists do that. Yeah, and then, gynecologists do yeah, that? Yeah, sometimes they do that, yeah. Really? Because they see a lot of women. And a lot of, a lot of, oh, they get that area? It's like yeah. while I'm down there? Mm-hmm. Sort of like... <laughs> It's like when you get a when you get a brake job, and the guy goes, "As long as I pull the rotors off to turn, and you want me to repack the bearings, like that kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. as long as you're up and your panties yeah, yeah. are down, and I'm down here giving you a pap smear. How about I laser off some of this excess hair? Mm-hmm. How about bikini wax? Or who else are you talking to about that kind of thing? Would you got a colleagus? Yeah, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, take care of it. Right. You can't even see the guy's head. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where his his head begins and your vagina ends. <laughs> <laughs> what if that ever happens? Well, you know, someone has the same pube hairs, like uh, you know, this kind of college man. The guy's wearing a bad rug. You know, yeah. they don't know where hers ends and his begins. So she gets a little itch. Gynecologist, I'm sure, it happens all the time. Gynecologist now would be a decent gig, but uh, you know, mid six back in the day. Back in the day, that was a, that was a tough gig. Right, true. Uh, yeah, I wasn't there in the six. <laughs> No, I mean now. I mean now. It's like they got a. It's, it's it was like the Everglades down there before. I mean, you had to move stuff aside before you even got to the business, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's all. Yeah. It's all get, good. Get those fan boats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's all like right. kind of early Playboy. We got it. I know. I kind of like that. We got to take a break. Uh, Third Strike is our guest tonight. We're going to hear something else off of the uh, new CD out on Tuesday, and uh, we'll do that. And we'll talk to you after this. Hey, 
everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Third Strike is our guest. Jim and Eric are both here from the band. Los Angeles, the name of the CD, and that is coming out Tuesday. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one call, and then we're going to hear another song off of that CD. Let's talk to uh, Amy, who's 19. Amy? Yeah. What's up? Um, first of all, I just have a, like, a follow-up for the last girl who called Ashley um, about the body hair. Right. Um, I have the, the polycystic ovarian thing mm-hmm. that Dr. Drew mentioned, and yeah. I've been taking... Um, a medication that's really been helping it. So I just wanted to let her know that. What are you taking? A uh, spironolactone. That's that's aldactone. That's the one I mentioned. Has it been yeah. helping a lot? That's good. Yeah, it has. And like with all the other symptoms, like uh, there's like a blood sugar problem and stuff. Well, like that's that. that's PCO though. That's polycystic ovarian disease. Yeah. Are you taking glucophage or something like that? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay. Good, good times. So what's the question? Um, every time, like I like my boyfriend and I, like whenever I give him oral sex, like. Uh, I have like an instant gag re- reaction afterwards. Afterward, like I have to run away and just like throw up, kind of. Is that yeah. after he ejaculates? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm having that reaction just thinking about it. Well, it's not. <laughs> it's not really gag reflex. It's just gross reflex. It's a gross oh, reflex. Yeah. It's like you take a swig of bad milk yeah. from the fridge. You know, you drink from the cart, and it's a like, whoa. Then you run yeah. across the room. You run and spit it in the yeah. sink. Yeah. Well, I just. I feel bad. Like, I feel, you know. Oh, he doesn't care. He's glad to see you. Yeah, exactly. Keep going, baby. More yeah, TV right. time for me and my penis. We don't take it personally. But the question is, can you continue to go through this? Well, I don't, like, it's pretty bad. Like, it's just gotten worse. Do you feel like you're going to heave? Or do you heave? I do. Yeah. Like, after I spit it out, because I used to just swallow it, but then I just got disgusted with it, and so I just started spitting it out, and... When I spit it out, then I throw up. And I mean, we've been dating for like a year and a half. Mm. And Just keep it in your mouth and then give him a French kiss. Uh, Ooh. Uh, uh, don't, uh, they ma- don't they make some kind of pills uh, that can flavor it? Uh, uh, some pina colada pills or something? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah what, what can you do about that? I mean, Not a hell of a lot. I mean, what if it went in your mouth and you spit it out immediately? Would you still gag? Or what if, yeah, you, let it, what if you let it come out of your mouth you know, immediately? You know what I mean? Not even. You know what I mean? Well, I like, kind of have to like go to the bathroom and spit it out. You, really but no what if you else. just let it not even accumulate in your mouth? You see what I'm saying? Well, why don't you just take your mouth off right before? Where? <laughs> and then where would it go? On him. On him. Yeah. Come see him. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like that. No. Well, it's, well, it's got to be sensitive to your feelings yeah. too. You know. Yeah. He likes that yeah. more than not doing it at all, though, right? Don't right. Deal with it. You are in charge, Amy. Well, I haven't told him. Uh, well, I think you, the, you hear you retching in the next room. <laughs> no, because like it's he just passes kind of out. Wait, yeah. hey, he doesn't he doesn't know you're vomiting. Not really. Sure. It's just kind of. It, I'm not actually like vomiting. It's just kind of like. I mean, I do, but it's just once. You know. You're doing that. You're doing that like that dry heave thing. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, yeah. Yeah. What are we going to do? Nothing. Uh, Amy, you're in charge. You do what works for you. That's it. If it doesn't, not good for him, believe me, he'll be okay. So long as he gets... Yeah. Wait, you think it. you're going to offend him or he's going to break up with you? Well, I don't think you're going to break up with me, but I just feel like I'm going to offend him. All right. Well, do you, do you have, are you on birth control? I am, but I, it's only for the PCOS. We don't, we don't have sex. But it will work. It will work. You don't have sex? Why not? Because uh, we're both in school, and it's just there's too many risks, I guess. You're on you're on birth control, though, right? Yeah. What are you on? What are the risks? The pill? Uh, I'm on Merset. It's on what? Merset. All right, that's a pill, right? Yep. Yeah. Right, you're good. You're not going to get pregnant. Oh. Uh, I don't know. It just no. You're not going to. Get... He doesn't want to. He just, he just wants to be Jay. I, I guess. I like this kid's style. This is Adam's kind of guy. Yeah, I like that. Well, why do you take the pill then? Uh, for for my for, oh, oh, for polycystic ovarian disease. Oh, All right, yeah. baby. Well, good times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. you're in charge, Amy. Just remember that you are in charge. All right. Okay. Just do what works Thank for you. you. Just work it out. Thank Maybe. you. He doesn't want sex, huh? No, he. I guess not. I don't, know. I don't want to either. So it works out okay. Oh, okay. Does he give you oral sex? Yeah. All right. That's good. Good okay. Time. Good times. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, look. I mean, uh, what, what do you want us to say? You, you can't have it go in your mouth. You don't want it to go on him. 
what do you want it to, uh, to uh, like hit it with a laser and have it evaporate in the air or uh, run up <laughs> with like a, like a net that you use to uh, clean your aquarium with and trap it all or you want to get the jizz fairy to buzz <laughs> over it well what do you want us to do we got a math problem hey, he here. Could, maybe this was an opportunity for that uh, that perineal pressure to make it retrograde yeah uh, how about that you guys know about that mm. that if you press a certain a spot in your right. taint area there yeah. on the uh I like to say that area that border between uh scrotenberg and anusville mm. right right, right on the border there if you press that nothing comes out right yeah. it goes back into your bladder yeah it's good times so. yeah that's mm. what i do when i'm you know on the airplane <laughs> <laughs> Guy falls asleep in the seat next to me, and I can't afford to make a mess. You know what I'm saying? I go for the perineum push. That's why I never fall asleep when I sit next to him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's hear a song, shall we? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, Third Strike, Lost Angel, and this one is called Redemption. Lost Angel is the name of the uh, CD. <laughs> <laughs> and that is uh, coming out on uh, Tuesday. That is uh, this Tuesday. You can see these guys on the Warp Tour and uh, OzFest coming up this summer. And Drew? There you are. Yeah? It's on Who do you want to talk to? Want to take a break? Marcella. Marcella. Oh, really? That was, they, believe me, go. All right. Marcella? Hi. What's up? Hey, is this Adam? Yeah. Hey, Adam. Marcella? So good on the radio. What's happening, baby? Oh, not much. Just here in San Pedro, listening to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, you guys know her? Yeah. Pedro, huh? Definitely. Pedro, yes. Not San Pedro, as in like Pedro, but Pedro. So let's Pedro. I want to hear a love problem. That's what I want to hear. My love problem? Your, your I question. have no love problem. Who? I have no sexual diseases or anything like that. No gonorrhoeopsifilades. <laughs> what? <laughs> you, you're a third strike fan? Um, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna get there. Um record out Tuesday and I'm oh, going to start yeah. listening to their music. Like coming to the record release party? Yeah, where is it going to be at? Troubadour, Tuesday night. Oh, okay, I'll be there. Jeez, I would have plugged that. Is that on here? <laughs> it's not on there. All right, Tuesday night. Oh, yeah, this Tuesday at the Troubadour. Yeah, I was doodling over it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Marcella? Yes? What are you doing? I'm listening to you guys. All right. But I want to ask Third Strike a question. Oh, uh, please, please, do. All right. Um, who's in there, first of all? Is it Eric and who else? Jim. 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 Okay, which is the uh, uh, front man, or who's that? The uh, hold on person? a second. Let me ask you a question. Are you good looking? Yes. Do I, I sound good looking? Uh, yes, you do, because you're a pain in the ass. <laughs> oh, I am? <laughs> yes. Could you tell? Just go yeah, right to the you're question. you're kind of waiting around, but you understand we can't see you, so you're annoying us. I could uh, fax you over my question. Mar I mean, no, my, Marcel, not my Marcel, question, but my picture. Just go to the question <laughs> right now. All right, okay. My question is, uh, what are your guys' influence? Influences. Influences. I think it's a different show. Yeah. Everything is set new country. <laughs> new country? Everything new country. is set new country. Okay. Exclusively new country. All right. Um, you mean like opera? That's sure. Yeah, everything. Sure. All right, baby. Fax that picture over and then call back. <laughs> All right, I will. All right. We'll have a new attitude. What? All right, baby. Good times. <laughs> okay, bye. All right. Bye. We'll take ourselves a little break. Third strike is uh, here. These guys will be standing by the fax machine. Yeah. We'll be back after this. Love line. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew. <sighs> Should we get the phone or No, it's too late. Nah. Third Strike is uh, in here tonight. Jim and Eric both here representing the band. And the album is coming out on Tuesday, everybody. Yep. And the uh, record uh, signing, record release party at the Troubadour. Yes, yes sir. That's uh, up on uh, Sunset Strip there, and that is at Tuesday. What time is that at? Do you know? We go on at eight thirty. Seven thirty, and we're on at eight thirty. All right. So, uh, any tickets available to that? Uh, uh, well, you can try. You left. Go yeah. down there. Just come down. We'll get you in. That's right, Jennifer. Hi. You're 26. You yes. seeing Jennifer's car reminds me, and we've not been to Chicago in a while. You yeah, come out we, here. we need to spend some more time in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Jennifer's calling for me. We nice. really need you out here. All right, coming out tonight. Red Eye. Um, you know, I have a question for Jim and Eric first. Are you guys married? No. No, no. okay. I have a... Wait, wait a second. I like the way they answer that. <gasps> no. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they call them. They are married. The we like our fans. Is, I'm recently single. I have a really bad relationship, and I'm 
not very eager to get very intimate with guys and I'm wondering what, if that's what happened with this relationship it was bad it was pretty verbally abusive and I I wasn't made to feel very important how long over what was it always abusive from the beginning or just did it break down into that it, it, it was I got involved with someone who had spent a lot of time in jail and had a lot of pent up aggression and how long was he abusive to you he never hurt me. You know, he never hit me, but we were... Adam's going to hang up on you. you got one chance. Two years. To... Two years. I'm Thank sorry. You. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. It's all right, man. I'm sorry. I wasn't going to hang up on you. I know this game. I don't want to get hung up on. All right. And Adam... Yeah. Oh, so you guys think, I mean, if I don't want to, you know, even kiss a guy in the first date, is that like, like an okay thing to do this day and age? If you give him a hand job, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's fine not to be physical, but... You, you've, you've stuck yourself on two ends of the same continuum, which is, I'm going to be with an abusive, awful guy, or no guys. Right. Or certainly not, and I may be with world worthwhile guys, but I'm not going to be open to any intimacy with them. Right. And it, it's the same kind of avoidance of real intimacy. So how about just being more careful and more clear about the guys you're with and be with somebody who's boring and... Uh, yeah, you know, not so uh, enticing as the ones you were attracted to. Really, be careful of your attractions. For some reason, you're attracted to guys that are abusive. Steer, uh, steer clear of the ex cons. Yeah. yeah, and if you're attracted, d distrust that that's a guy you should be with. You should be with somebody who's kind of boring. Yeah, yeah. find yourself a nerd. That's what I originally called for. As I need one of Adam's world-renowned reality checks. I just. I'm afraid to do things because I'm afraid of how people are going to look at me. But Adam, I need what, you to tell what do you, me. What do you mean you're scared to do things? You know, I'm just I'm afraid to um, to even like move a certain way because uh, you know I'm afraid of people are going to look at me. But you have to tell me. You know, no one's looking. They don't care about you. You're little. You're nothing. <laughs> see, Come on, we'll give it to me. But you see place. what that is, Jennifer? You need to be. Ab you're even asking Adam to abuse you. Yeah, it's crazy. You right. have to be abused to feel okay. Exactly. Jennifer, nobody right. cares. Nobody. <laughs> not, not even your immediate family. You're right. About, you're right. <laughs> yeah. If something tragic happened to you, they'd be upset for the first day or two, and then it'd be business uh -huh. as usual, baby. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And if I went to your mom like three days after you died and said, I'm sorry about Jennifer, she'd go, who? Who? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, no. All right, baby. No one cares. So uh, you should be freed up to live your life. Woohoo! Good times. Speaking of uh, nobody caring when somebody dies, I watched Love and Death again last night. Wow. When the herring... The Cla herring, classic Woody Allen. When moment. the herring salesman dies and Ann Ke uh, Diane Keaton says, uh, <laughs> so, of his wh letters? what's for lunch? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where should we go for lunch? Yeah. Everyone should go out and see uh, Love and Death. Old Woody Allen movie, but a funny one. Christine? Yes? You're 22? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, well, my question is, I have HPV, and I know what it can do to me. I mean, it can cause me cancer and and gentle warts, but I was wondering what can it do to my boyfriend? HPV's warts, everybody. Yeah, it can cause, can make him contagious, which he necessarily is, I would suggest. I heard, I heard you guys like uh, a couple weeks ago, and um, I, 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 you guys were uh, mentioning that um, like if they're s uh, circumcised, that it's not really as bad. It's, e as it's hard. It's they're hard. not circumcised. There was an article in the New England Journal of Medicine about a month ago that suggested that if more men were circumcised, there'd be less men getting HPV. Oh, okay. That HPV is easier to get if you are uncircumcised. Le less men spreading it and to therefore, women. That's the main thing with HPV in men is that they then become contagious to women. Uh -huh. they, can, they can get warts, but the warts can be easily controlled. And now if they get that virus, though, around their anus, it can... It can cause anal cancers. That's oh. why I always wipe down the strap on. <laughs> always uh, alcohol every time. Uh, then Cure torch out. it. Then. But yeah, then I, then I torch it. Right. But can it cause him cancer as well? Or well, What did I just say? <laughs> Didn't hear it? Um, you know, my phone was getting ready to cut out and it was beeping. Okay. It can cause anal cancers in men if, if the warts get down in that area. Oh, okay. But nothing to the penis other than contagiousness. Don't you want to die, though, if you have butt uh, cancer. warts butt on your cancer. anus? Mm -hmm. And the thing about butt cancer is it, it, it takes, it's usually in your later in life, 70, 80, that it really comes on. So. Oh, man. Yeah, that's uh, bad. Do you know if there's, like, any effective treatments out there for it or? For HPV, of course. You're, I'm sure you're getting them, right? Um, well, my doctor's is doing that, just uh, the wait and see what happens. All right, you just got to follow them, and they have to be treated when the warts come up. You have to take off the precancerous lesions of the cervix when they come along. So it's just something needs to be followed. Oh, right. Okay. G okay, good times, bad though, right? Times. I mean, bad times, bad <laughs> times. Oh, uh, you know, we should all just take a moment, pause, and thank Thankful. God we don't have vaginas <laughs> yeah. right now.
Do you know what yes, I mean? but you have a prostate, and that will you will live to hate that too. The prostate? Oh yes. Really? Oh yes. Hmm. But for now, you do not want to be a female under forty. You don't want to be a male over fifty. So this, the vagina life. problems clear up over forty usually. They, they, yeah, they not so much. You say my mom has a fine vagina. A fine one, yes. No problems there. Yes, but your prostate is doomed for trouble. Damn oh, it, man! Mm. It's bad times. All right, let's see. Uh, Tom, Adam, Drew, how you guys doing? Hey, Good. Tom, what's up? Long time listener, first time caller. Cool. Great comment uh, on the whole. Girls don't want to receive a guy's semen on a blowjob. Right. Why can't she just put on her favorite flavored condom over his uh, junk and then uh, prevent the whole thing from happening? It just doesn't feel the same, man. The guys you know won't, the guys won't well, let her do that. I know that. I know that. But I'm saying it's either if it's one or the other, no blowjob or blowjob with condom on, I think you're going to take the blowjob with condom on, right? Yeah, but it's kind of like a blowjob with the condom. It's like yeah. you're with a prostitute. Yeah. And no girlfriend's going to want to be like a prostitute because... No. Well, wait, 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 wait. Now you're sort of casting aspersion to the proper practice of safe sex. I right? am. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you that's know. right. Well, that's my job. Yeah. So, you no, know, I don't think somebody would feel like prostitute. They just don't feel right. They don't like it, and so they're not going to do it. They would feel they'd have to do it if we're a prostitute. Right. And this way, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be inclined to do it. That's part of the problem these days. But yeah. I've heard this question a lot before, and I'll, on the... You guys never throw that out there as an option, this option either. Because we, we ran out of steam with it because so many of the guys just flatly rejected it when we brought it well, up. Well, we, we I, I, it, you know, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't like that either, but it's, you know, if it's either yay or nay, and it's like the only way to get it, and that's your thing, like Adam, you know, then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would that be okay for you? The condom thing? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You know, I've never had a, a BJ with a condom on. Well, there you go. That speaks volumes right there. And the other comment I think that uh, you guys brought up this beforehand is somebody something like guys drinking pineapple juice or something along those lines to make uh, things taste better. Yeah. Well, we don't. We don't. We're not big fans of that. That either. We well, really I, believe listen, that. my thing. It's like you want to na- make your Duke uh, <laughs> taste better. <laughs> you eat tapioca. And, yeah. and marshmallows. And marshmallows. <laughs> it's, it's still Duke, though. <laughs> and drink a lot of beer and eat a lot of hot dogs? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it, it's just... I, I mean, here's the, the thing about semen is there... Maybe you change the flavor of it a little bit, but it's still... I mean, if you got a problem with it, you got a problem with yeah. it, right? Yeah. You don't think it's something Ugh. else, do you? Ugh. This is what I yell at the dentist when he tries to give me the pina colada flavor <laughs> tooth pumice to, te- mm. to clean my teeth. It's like, who are you kidding, buddy? <laughs> what, do you, what you think? I, I, I think I'm at some uh, tropical I, resort yes, sipping a I think, pina colada. I think the taste this of is distracting. And the, and the taste of toothpaste are precise analogies. No, I'm excellent. saying excellent. You <laughs> have picked a flavor that I yeah, like, no, pina yeah. colada, but it's in the, it's in pumice oh, form, yeah, and so. your smoke's coming off so my tooth. Pina colada you think semen. I'm no. I'm, uh, P- right. Pina oh, colada semen. No. I, I right? know. Drew, I think I'm mad at you, but I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, let's go to break. All right. All right, everybody. Go out and get that uh, Third Strike CD Please. on uh, Tuesday when oh, it comes out. And also, to say hi to Jim's sister? Yeah. Oh, say hi to Jim. Long time listener, Linda. Oh, so. yeah. Hi, hey, Linda. Thanks for listening. And uh, keep listening. And if you start your own band, you can come on one day yourself. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I want to thank Jim and Eric for coming in here. And again, uh, Troubadour, Tuesday night. That's uh, when they're playing, and that's uh, when they're doing the record signing and all that. Yes. Nice to meet you guys. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. And until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins-Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.